in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed god is a God of times and seasons. Human activities happen within the frame of times and seasons. If a woman takes in, for instance, it's a futile prayer to begin to pray when she's three weeks pregnant. Oh God, give me speed. No, that is not a wise prayer. It's not a scriptural prayer and it's not even an intelligent prayer. What she prays is for grace to go through the full season. There are times when the baby will want to come out at the fourth month. Nobody celebrates it, even though it looks like delivery. What is wrong is not the process. What is wrong is that it is violating seasons. Are we together now? Listen very carefully. When you give birth to a child, imagine a child that just came out from its mother's womb and then jumps and begins to speak. You don't call that child a normal child. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, the Bible says Jesus increased. Other versions will say Jesus grew. The word incarnate. But when he came to the earth, he subscribed to the law of times and seasons. He grew in wisdom. He grew in stature. He grew in favor with God and with men. Someone say times. Say seasons. One more time, say times, say seasons. If you get up by 12 midnight or you get up by 11 p.m. Nigerian time and tell someone good afternoon, the person will recommend you to see a doctor. Is that true? Afternoon is a season, but that timing should not be called afternoon. I'm saying this because most believers do not know the role of discerning seasons as far as their manifestation is concerned all things are not possible every time all things are only possible the beauty of anything is when you discern the season it is connected to if a young boy of eight comes to you and says i want to marry you are going to tell the boy something is wrong with you not because marriage is bad but he's doing something to seasons if he comes at age nine and says give me the car keys you will reject the offer not because you hate the child. Your giving him gifts also subscribes to seasons. Are we together now? Most believers understand desires. They understand the fatherhood of God. But they do not understand seasons. So the kinds of prayer we pray. And the way we approach the Christian experience is a revelation largely of our ignorance in knowing that God operates with men through times and seasons. Is someone blessed already? Before God created man, as we know in Genesis chapter 1, he put in place seasons. The Bible says he made many lights. He made the stars to signify times and seasons. Then he made two great lights. The greater to rule the day, the lesser to rule the night. When seasons were in place, he now said, let us make man. So man came seeing seasons already in motion. If you do not discern seasons, then you can be robbed of an opportunity. Listen, if I have an appointment with you, if I say, see me tomorrow, the next question you will ask is, what time? You can't see me every time. Just because I said tomorrow is your day does not mean every part of tomorrow. You have to meticulously know the season. If I say, see me tomorrow, 
and you knock on my door by 11 p.m. It is still tomorrow, but you did not go far enough to know the season. Maybe the opportunity I had for you was for 8 p.m. or 8 a.m. You can be, listen, you can be in the right atmosphere, but the wrong season. Standing before a tree when it is not time for figs or time for Jesus caused a tree. Not because it was not a tree. There was an expectation based on a season and the tree did not deliver. It took advantage of the season. That means according to God's design, that tree should not just have leaves, it should have figs. If God can cause a tree because it aborted seasons, we need to find out what has been happening to us because of the absence of discernment. Is someone learning already? There are some of us, based on the prophetic calendar and the season of your life, you should not be at this level of grace. There are some of us, you are in a season of your life where there is unusual favor, but because you do not have the eyes to see it, you are not maximizing the season. In Genesis chapter 28, when you read about the encounter of Jacob at Luz, hallelujah, a place he would later name Bethel, the Bible says he put a stone there to sleep and then he saw a ladder ascending to reaching the heavens and there were angels ascending and descending. And when all that encounter happened, the Bible says he woke up and he said, the Lord was in this place and I knew not. He said, surely this is the gates of heaven. This is the house of God. He did not maximize the blessings that that season would bring. The next thing that will happen in the life of Jacob was a 20-year tragedy. By the time we get to Genesis 32, God tries him again. This time around, he dismissed everything and was ready. As soon as a man came, he held him. He said, I missed it the first time. He said, leave me for the day break. I know it is my season. I will not let you go until there is an information I know about this season. That when God visits men, he does not come anyhow. Now that you have come, I will not waste my season. Leave me for the day break it. He said, what is your name? He would have remained Jacob forever. But discerning seasons change him to Israel. He said, Jacob, he says, thou shall no longer be called Jacob. For as a prince, thou hast had power with God and you have prevailed. He touched the hollow of his thigh and he blessed him. The Bible says he named the place Peniel and the sun arose. The sun arose meant seasons had changed. It was night when he had that encounter. And there is a relationship between weeping and night. The Bible says the sun arose. That means weeping ends. Because you see, in the realm of the spirit, you do not call day based on biological or geographic timing. The Bible says he called the, the darkness night and he called the light day. Your day is not when the clock moves. Your day is when light comes. So you can be 12 in the afternoon and still be in darkness because the requisite level of light that turns your nights to day is not there. Please sit down. So God is a God of times and seasons. The dimension of God's grace and beauty that was supposed to release in his creation is connected to seasons. If you do not understand your season, listen, if you learn how to play football professionally at 60, your skill is there, but you learn too late because the season of football and the flourishing season does not allow that you, you can go to the field as a, a, as a hobby but not professionally speaking. Are we together? Hmm. Seasons. Seasons have the power to veto your skill. Seasons have the power to veto your sincerity of heart. You can be the most sincere person, but if you miss seasons, that is it.
it will take the mercy of God. Why did God send me here? Because I believe there are people who have missed seasons already. There are certain things when you were supposed to be born again, you did not even know. And based on the, the blueprint of your life, he said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written. Imagine if Jesus discovered purpose at age 31, not knowing it was only 33 years. He discovered purpose at age 12 and he had 18 years to prepare for a ministry of three and a half years. Someone say seasons. Do you know one of the assignments of the power of God is to be able to circumvent through the, the negative things that have been programmed as a result of missing seasons. That's why we have things like speed and we have things like restoration. These are prophetic systems of advantage to help the believer still gain time. When you have missed a season, God can give you speed. Speed means that he is able to make you move past the current time. And restoration means because he does not dwell in time, he can reach back to take the events that would have happened and shift it forward for you. So the Bible says, and I will restore the years. He can restore years. Only God can do that. But it is important. Please listen carefully. Make sure you are paying attention. There are some of you based on the prophetic blueprint in your life. You have one more year for your manifestation. Yet it is that same year that you are getting born again. It takes time to know God. It takes time to prepare. There are some of you who are kingdom billionaires in the making and by prophecy. But because you did not discern purpose nor seasons. All times are not convenient for all things. When you buy a product, there's something they write on the product, best before. That means if you want to get the most of this product, consume it within this time range. You can buy a product of whatever amount and leave it to expire. What does it mean for a product to expire? The container does not have to spoil. But there is no guarantee that you can maximize the value there again. Someone, please hear me. The Lord created and allowed for this Jubilee Conference to address something in your life. Because you will know that there is a spirit called a waster. Do you know the assignment of a waster? <laughs> the the assignment of a waster is to either occupy or distract you so that time will go without a justification of the events that should happen there. When he rebukes and restores years, he talks about the locust, the palmer worm, the canker worm. These are not just insects. These, these, these are spirit entities that have the ability to waste people's lives. There was a man called the madman in Gadara. His correct name was the evangelist over Gadara. That was the man mandated to save a Decapolis. And yet he was bound and kept. The Bible does not tell us who kept him in the tomb. But he would injure himself and remain there. Only God knows how long. Jesus went to Gadara to save one man and return back. Because in that one man was the destiny of many. I don't know who I'm speaking to tonight. But someone God brought you here. Because it's time for your family to rise. For God's sake God brought you here. Because it's time to keep saying happy new year. And merry Christmas with nothing changing. You know that something is wrong. If the only thing growing in your life is your age. If the only thing growing is your age. And nothing else is growing to justify it. someone say with me in the name of jesus shout it again say in the name of jesus, in the name of jesus I, decree and declare I decree and declare that the waster, that the waster has, no power has no power over the seasons of my life open your mouth and begin to pray in, in one minute in the name of jesus i decree and declare that the waster has no power 
over the seasons of my life, I come against the waster. Anything that has been assigned to waste me, I declare to them to be commanded. You have no power. Shake a back at those can like a boss. Is someone praying? You have no power over my season. You have no power over my season. I declare today that the power of the waster is broken. And I break the power of the waster. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. First Chronicles chapter 12. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. My God, I sense the power of God in this place. First Chronicles 12, 32. Hmm. Kali shali kaparos kadiba katosha branda katosia. Kende shale sobra haskema shabakatos. Embra kakapatos kali kabarasi ketea. Shali skabrende kebarusiata. I'm praying for four people. I want you to bring them out right now. The power of God is resting upon them. This altar that has sat upon your family, sat upon your family. I don't know where you are under the sound of my voice, but I stretch my hand standing upon the grace upon this altar. And I decree and declare right now, right where you are, let the power of God rest upon you right now. Let the power of God rest upon you right now. Let the power of God rest upon you right now. Let the power of God rest upon you right now. Please bring them out. Let the power of God rest upon you right now. Let the power of God rest upon you right now. Let the power of God rest upon you right now. Bring them before the altar here. The door that has stopped your season. We have come by a rod of a higher priesthood to scatter that door and release you into your jubilee in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please don't be distracted. I want you to bring them out. I'm about to pray right now. The spirit of God is ministering to me. There are people here having the spirit of delay sitting upon your life. The anointing of the spirit is going to come upon you right now. I don't know where you are, but in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus and that fire will rest upon you. Please, whether you are an usher or not, bring them out. In the name of Jesus, are you ready now? Word of life, are you ready? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Help that man. In the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of delay. Lose God's people right now. Lose God's people right now. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out, please. Delay. Be broken. Delay. Here at the Jubilee Conference. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't Love you won't down. Please sit down if you can. We are soon going to be praying in this place. Except, listen to me. If God be God, I am saying it again. Anything that followed you here to mock the name of your God in the name of Jesus as we celebrate Jubilee. We declare that it's a season of exodus for you. First Chronicles. First Chronicles 12 and 32. Can you see it projected? Let's read it together in concert if you can. One, two, read. And of the children of Issachar, 
which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The Bible says the heads of them were 200. And as a result, their brethren were at their command. There was a strange tribe of Issachar. And the Bible says these men were not the most skillful. Mm -mm. Are we together? These men were not the most privileged. Mm -mm. The Bible does not record that. The distinguishing feature of this tribe is that for some reason, they place value on discerning times. And as a result, the Bible says they were, they had authority and they were ahead. Their brethren were at their command. Please pay attention. Knowing then that life operates based on the law of times and seasons, how do you then maximize the seasons of your life? Because every man according to the law of time and chance, the Bible says it happened to them all. That means every poor man Based on the integrity of God, there was a season in his life that if he knew, something he would have done in that season would have changed his life. Every man struggling in ministry, according to the justice of God, there is always a moment where an opportune time comes, but it will look like any other day. Listen, I want to show you something right now that will bless you. Are you ready? So the Bible says... The sons of Issachar possess two qualities that we need to receive tonight. That is the key to maximizing seasons. Number one is the faculty to discern times. Number two, the ability to know what to do. Two things. John chapter 5. Let's go to John chapter 5. John 5, beginning from verse 1. Please pay attention. This is where the key is now. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. Listen carefully. And Jesus went up unto Jerusalem. Reading to verse 9. Please be patient. It says, now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. What happened there? In this lay a great multitude of important folk, blind, halt, withered, waiting. Waiting. That was all they did there. Waiting. Whoever told you waiting is a waste of time. Waiting is the skill of the mighty. They know that you do not strike every time. Ask a general in the army. If you want to know how to win war, you must not only master the art of fighting, you must know how to wait. Watch how the lion, the lion is called the king of the jungle, but the lion does not strike every time. The lion can wait for five hours, allowing a head to relax. That is the price for the catch. That is the price for that title. Please go back to that scripture. The Bible says, the moment you find out you are incapacitated, the first thing you should do is to wait. There are many people who move while they are failing. When, if you drive on 150 in the wrong direction, you are only prolonging your pain. When you, someone tells you, I am at so, so, so place, you will tell the person, if you want to help him and reduce sorrow, you will say, wait there. I am coming to help you. If the person keeps moving while you are going there, he's only prolonging his time. For someone here, God sent me to tell you, wait. You have been roaming around. It is clear that your, your ideas are not working. Man of God, it is clear that your approach to ministry is not working. It is not more ministrations you need. It is not more name you need. You need to lock yourself and wait. <laughs> Businessman, is not traveling from Paris to UK to America. No, 
it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow this is a prophetic word for someone we live in a generation where we pride in rushing there is a difference between speed and rushing speed is always a product of waiting God gives men speed, but he does not rush men. To rush means to disrespect season. When God gives you speed, is to maximize season. There is a difference between rushing. Hallelujah. We live in a world where people will see the results of many years of a man and want to just claim it overnight. God gives speed, but I repeat, precious people of God, there are certain things that only happen at the sequence of times and seasons. It's why many people today are getting into all kinds of things because in as much as they want to, they think they want to have it fast. And don't get me wrong, God gives speed. But there are certain things you cannot rush. A pregnant woman cannot rush the arrival of her child. It's been programmed already. When you give birth to a child that is not in the season, it's not called delivery. There is another name for it. Politician, this is a prophetic word for you. Wait. Man of God, the secret to your maximizing the next one year. Wait. Businessman, as much as God has vowed and promised increase for you, the prophetic word that God is giving you tonight is wait. Let's go back to John 4 so we tie it. John 5, please. The Bible says, impotent folks, they were aware that they were incapacitated and did not have the power to help them. They respected and honored the season by waiting. They were waiting for the moving of the water. It was the water that was moving. But them, they had to wait. Verse 5. My story begins now. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. Somebody say long standing issue. One more time. Say long standing issue. It is amazing that as powerful as time is, Time does not change anything. Time only reveals. One day go better is absolute nonsense. No. The passage of time is not what changes things. Maximizing seasons is what changes things. I am sure that after two years of lying down there, the man said by the third year I will be fine. Not knowing that it was 38. If Jesus did not come to rescue this man, 38 would have become 50. Is someone learning now? The Bible says, when Jesus saw him, remember he was not the only one there, but something, oh, this is the thing about Jesus. This is the thing about Jesus. The Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate. He's slow to anger and rich in love. That no matter how a man messes up seasons, when Jesus sees you, he does not even talk about the seasons wasted. Adumbrated in the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son wasted his seasons. And the Bible says he came to himself. And he said, how many hired servants as my father? And I am here feeding with the swine. He said, I will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say, father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants the bible says while he was afar off as soon as the father met him there was no discussion about wasted seasons the father restored the signet ring put a robe of honor and took him to the home for a feast for someone here i want you to know that in as much as God honors seasons he's still a merciful God he is Lord over seasons and it is still not too late apostle i got born again at 50 how long will it take me to know the holy spirit to build a relationship find strength the lord of the season is your god as powerful as seasons are they submit to the god of the bible that means you shouldn't be surprised that although you are here a tenant by december you are still in a house God will give you a house that you did not build. And people will say, no, 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 no. I, 
I thought we, we, we concluded that your life is already wasted. And you will say, I came to a conference and I found out if you do not understand all of these things, you cannot understand the mystery of Jubilee. <laughs> Jubilee is not the name of a season. It's an event that happens within a season. Are we together? Let's finish this. Let me walk with time. Please back to John 5. The Bible says, And Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now there now a long time and he said unto him will thou be made whole in other words based on my design of times and seasons you shouldn't be here many seasons have come and given you an opportunity to rise could you not discern them and the important man said sir my excuse is i have no man when the water is troubled that means i have gone so far to know the season but i did not know that to help me make the action it says to put me in the pool but while i am coming another step it down before me jesus said unto him let me show you that i have authority over seasons this is not the time for you to rise but the lord of the season says rise this is jubilee right there because you will see that there is jubilee that happens after seven sabbaths but there is jubilee personified in a person every time jesus comes it is your season his presence can reprogram jubilee any day any time Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, he chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love. Hallelujah. Is someone learning? So John chapter 5 reveals to us that no matter how long a situation is, once you know how to wait, there are two ways to receive a miracle based on John chapter 5. Number one is to wait for seasons and take the required action. Number two is to look for Jesus. If for any reason you miss out in seasons, you don't wait until seasons come again because sometimes it takes a long time for it to come. You have to look for Jesus. Jesus is the reprogrammer of seasons. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? If that man waited there, he would have multiplied his pain. Jesus taught us two lessons. One, that the best way for a man to maximize seasons in his life is number one, to be able to know that God built this system based on the law of times and seasons and you must sustain the discernment the faculty to understand seasons in your life are we together now and then to know the required action to take there are some of you for instance your destiny helper was in power for many years he would not be there forever within that time you had unusual access it was a season but you used this honor to prolong your pain and that season finished you discovered you were supposed to use honor to have access but at that time the person is no longer there there are some of you there was a season where your parents were alive you would have sought them and received their blessing but you were occupied trying to make money and you never got the blessing and now sadly they've passed 
just when they pass you now understood the power of patriarchal blessing and you're saying apostle now that my father is gone is there a way that god can help me i will tell you shortly the bible says there is hope for a tree that even if it be cut short at the scent of water hallelujah the time i should have come to church and grown spiritually i spent it on riotous living and right now i don't have that luxury of time again can god do something about my life yes sir mm. yes sir and jabez was more honorable than his brethren the bible tells us the end of the life of jabez then he says the mother named him jabez because she bore him in sorrow and you can imagine as a young man doors closing no favor one day he said no i have to take my destiny by my hand and he said oh that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast and he prayed that prayer and the bible says god answered him and that was the change of his life please hear me i wish i had the time would have extensively dealt with leviticus 25 where you find the law of jubilee that according to god's economy and design that after every seven year a sabbath is declared and that there is a grace that is upon the land that makes it yield of its own and when it is seven sabbaths the year after seven sabbaths is declared as jubilee and that there are a number of activities that happen during jubilee one of it is for any reason if there is slavery around a person and that person cannot release himself by reason of paying what is due once it falls within the season of jubilee you must declare that person free so liberty is one of the signatures of jubilee number two is rest even the land is allowed to rest this is the dimension of jubilee are brought by the spirit of god to speak over our lives number one liberty from all captivities and then rest the bible speaking about joshua it says that the lord gave him rest round about and there was not anything that the lord said that fell short all came to pass We are celebrating 50 years of the hand of God upon this veteran of the gospel. Only God knows how it was two years, five years, 15 years. Many people here were not born when he started. The journey of faith, blind faith in the name of the Lord. Lord, I trust you and I know that you will lead me. 50 years old, anything is a serious matter. 50 years old trouble is real trouble 50 years old joy is is very strong and potent joy hallelujah today we stand to celebrate the mighty hand of god 50 years do you know the kind of spirits that a man must have circumvented by the power of the blood to survive 50 years even jesus knew the kind of spirits that were associated with the bloodline he came from nathaniel said can anything good come out of nazareth jesus did not say you are wrong go and find out the spirit that had eaten nazarenes where was samson that people rise and never stay you would think that jesus died early only that he finished his assignment but that spirit does not allow for long life Please pay attention to what I'm saying. There are spirits that make sure that in a family, the men serve the women. If you like, go to America for donkey years. You will return back as if they drove you there from the prison. Spirits. So when you survive 50 years, it is a testament of endurance is proof of valiancy you have mastered the weapons of war you see let me tell you the truth 
we live in a generation where unconsciously or consciously we have brought ourselves to make dishonor look marketable where we disrespect people's sacrifices we just think it was a mistake that man was just lucky to be a billionaire he was just lucky to be anointed i think that prophesying is just god just helping him once and for all or once in a while no the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully longevity is proof of mastery you have laid hold on something hallelujah 50 years so i celebrate the ministry and everyone who is connected the membership sons and daughters pillars who have stood with this ministry for 50 years is someone clapping and celebrating the god of jubilee for his mighty hand he said if the lord had not been by our side now may israel say except the lord builds a house the bible says they labor in vain that build it and except the lord watches over the city said the watchmen watch it but in vain it is vain to wake up early and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he giveth his beloved sleep hallelujah but number two now that you have celebrated we have to invoke the blessings that come with jubilee that means someone must refuse and say i i am part of this vision and i know what jubilee means lord i take advantage of your grace and i take advantage of the prophetic season that i am in as a bona fide covenant beneficiary of this grace hallelujah that when you are in that season of jubilee you can say lord I advocate my exodus from shame, from reproach, from causes, from activities that are connected to ancestry. If my biological father is dead, the one God has given me in the spirit is alive. And Lord, it will still suffice as far as my liberty is concerned. He said, who seen that this man was born blind? Him or his father? Hallelujah. There are not many 50 years in a man's lifetime. So this 50 years, the next time it will happen again is 50 years. You see, new year happens every year. But Jubilee happens sometimes in a man's entire lifetime once. In modern history, we do not know anybody who has celebrated more than three Jubilees. So this is a very prophetic, defining moment. hallelujah when i came into the office and i saw this great father standing no stick no bending no it looked as if if we ran he will even outrun me i thought to myself even though i came to preach this jubilee is not for word of life alone this jubilee is for any wise person who understands that when your heart is open you can receive hallelujah oh i came with my own token of honor too not to be, i am too young to waste my time whatever grace i know people who are 40 and cannot stand strong they can't climb a staircase three and and they are breathing as if they dug a well the grace for long life and health that God has placed upon the angel of this house. I stand in agreement with that grace. Word of life, hear me. In the name of Jesus from today, let there be no infant of days again. Let there be no infant of days again. Are you ready to pray now? in one minute before i give you some prayer points i want you to look at this vessel of glory this man of god this father spiritually and biologically everything you have seen god do in his life for these 50 years open up your heart and begin to receive by faith go ahead and pray
Lord, you have granted him speed. I receive it. Come on, are there people that pray here? Health and longevity. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Strength. Global visibility. Hallelujah. Now, let me wrap up. Please hear me. Let me quickly give you three keys. There are three keys that help people maximize seasons, especially prophetic seasons like Jubilee. I will run through them. Number one is called discernment. Discernment is the faculty of spiritual perception. The ability to perceive men for what they stand for spiritually. When Elijah was going to go, Elisha told him, I desire a double portion of your anointing. He said, if you can see me. Was he not looking at him? He that receives a prophet as touching the office, you can receive a prophet in the name of your brother. What you will receive is information about the family welfare. That's a brother's reward. Please listen. Discernment. The Lord was in this place and I knew not. Discernment. Discernment. Two men were going to Emmaus and the resurrected Christ was in their midst. But because they lack discernment, proximity does not just mean you will be blessed. It takes discernment. They were with Jesus and yet it had no effect on them. The Bible says they sat at table when he broke the bread. Their eyes were opened and he vanished. He didn't have the time again to talk with them. A season of discussion, they probably would have become apostles too like Paul. If they maximize that time. But time was going and their eyes were closed. Discernment. The miracle of open eyes is a real miracle. Then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture. Hallelujah. Listen, if your eyes is closed, you can stand near breakthrough. You can stand near anointed people and never have the eyes that see. The Bible says in Sodom and Gomorrah, are we still together now? We're about to pray that in Sodom and Gomorrah, when the angels came to the house of Lot, the man there wanted to sodomize the angels and Lot was even willing to give his daughters. And the Bible says the people refused, they were hesitant. And what happened was that the angels drew Lot in and struck them with blindness. And the Bible says they wearied themselves in front of the door. In front of where? In front of an opportunity, in front of an anointing, in front of a season. But because your hand can be well, if your eyes is closed, you will weary yourself. Someone needs to pray. This man I'm always calling my father. This woman I'm always calling my mother. This one I'm always calling my elder brother. This one I'm always calling a CEO. Who is he in the spirit? What grace was upon this woman that even though she did not go to school, she raised eight children without begging. That is more than hard work. There is an anointing behind the frail, uneducated woman. If all you are seeing is just mama who can set firewood, you will not receive anything. But the day you look at someone who is captain over many, a woman who did not go to school and raise children and the least of them is a noble personality. There is a grace. You need to start seeing men for what they stand for in the spirit. He said, no, we no man after the flesh. Is someone learning? Yes. So number one, discernment. Number two, the obedience of faith. Seasons will always demand that you take action. Seasons will always demand that you take action. The awareness of the seasons alone does not bring you breakthrough. The man in John 5 knew the season, but he did not have the grace nor the skill to take the action. While I am trying, I made efforts. Mm. This is where wisdom is profitable to direct. 
because when the axe head is blunt there will be efforts but there will be wastage you need the grace and the wisdom that directs the action for someone there is a season where god tells you go and register that company fast there is an unusual grace nationally territorially and spiritually there is a vista that has been opened for certain things there are certain people when a season opens for you you should go into fasting and prayer immediately because there is a grace that god is releasing it's like an unusual portal if you were not in the upper room on the day of pentecost even if you went to ease yourself that is it because the, 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 it came on only those who were there if you had attended the lecture for long and you say listen let me run and go and greet my mother you will return back and find out the holy ghost god loves everybody but he visited those who were waiting in the room when you discern seasons it's a call for responsibility for someone you are in a season right now where you have an opportunity to establish strategic relationships because according to the law of seasons rainy season always comes with a letter from dry season i am coming dry season always comes with a letter from rainy season don't just enjoy rainy season read the letter that it came with every season comes with a letter from another season coming this was the mystery of pharaoh's dream it says five um, um uh, 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 the, the seven seven fatted calves and then the lean ones ate them twice and joseph said it's the same thing god is showing you a modus operandi that cannot change for these seven years now make max for someone god is giving you this window of opportunity stop living a fake life maximize build relationships build capacity because there is something called your season of appearing and john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing man of god now that nobody has identified your grace yet now that nobody is placing a demand on you don't go around saying invite me prepare for the seasons so that when the time comes you you have, would have built stamina to survive the demand because if you fail in the day of battle if you turn aside the diagnosis is that your strength is small number three the third way we maximize seasons is through the mystery of sacrifice please listen listen sacrifice is not all about money in fact sacrifice is not even about anything material it's a spiritual transaction so when i say sacrifice don't just shut your mind to think you are talking of money money is the least expression of sacrifice the first sacrifice is you please listen carefully sacrifice the bible says gather unto me my saints psalm 50 and verse 5 they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice when Baal refused to answer and the prophets of Baal exhausted all their skill and their option the last key to provoke the realm of the spirit in their thoughts and imagination was to lacerate themselves they started by lacerating the animals it did not work they came to themselves there is something called a living sacrifice he said i beseech you brethren romans 12 and verse 1 that you offer your bodies unto God a living sacrifice he calls it holy and acceptable unto God and the Bible says it is your reasonable worship or act of service and then verse 2 says do not be conformed to this world is the Greek word aeon it says but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove that which that good acceptable and perfect will of God Paul said let no man trouble me I bear upon my body it is not only the anointing that is on me there is a scar that is a testament that I stretch myself to maximize seasons there are times where you pray like never before there are times you fast like never before there are times that you give like never before there are times you serve like never before seasons word of life hear me when a visitation came to the house of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10 
I hope you know that was the foundation of the experience of the Gentiles into the faith. From chapter 1 of Acts to chapter 9, no Gentile had the privilege of partaking of that life because salvation was for the Jews first. Let me show you somebody who pulled the testimony of salvation from the Jews to reach the Gentiles. When Peter came to the house of Cornelius, the angel appeared to Cornelius and he said two things. There were two things that made this possible. One, your prayer. Two, your arms. This is what brought me. Sacrifice is never complete. There is a difference between giving and sacrifice. The difference is that it will cost you. I will not give unto God anything. People have abused the issue of sacrifice. Once you hear sacrifice, people just think you can give a lot of money and not give sacrifice. Because it's not about money. God is not a politician. God is not a, I mean, he's a God of heaven. You can carry money and drop it and the realm of the spirit says nonsense because if there is a vetting system in the realm of the spirit before a man's giving is approved the macedonian church first gave on themselves before their substance is someone hearing now but let me tell you sincerely even god as powerful as god is he did not change the season of sin and the dominion of sin over man by casting it God did not cast sin out of man, even though he was the creator of the heavens and the earth. He did not send angel Michael. He didn't send Gabriel. He didn't send the four living creatures. When it was time for him to take the issue of the destiny of man serious, he sent his son. He's only begotten at that point. John chapter 3, this was Jesus himself teaching Nicodemus the dynamics of the kingdom. He came to him by night. The Bible says Nicodemus came to him by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. For no man can do these miracles except God be with him. And that began the discussion that led to chapter 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. God so loved the world. He knew that there was a season, an opportune time. And he gave Jesus. When Jesus was at Gethsemane, he was almost tempted to renegotiate salvation. Can you take this cup off me? But God was determined to see that men are saved. If you use 1,000 naira to buy a drink, it means you value that drink more than the 1,000. That's why you are able to part with it. So the, the apostle said, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us because he conferred us he brought us as many sons today jesus is not the only begotten of the father he is the firstborn among we the begotten because of sacrifice please hear me please hear me i'm wrapping up now whether it is satan you serve or jesus you serve you will always walk with the law of sacrifice if you choose and donate yourself to the devil the first thing he will demand of you is sacrifice you choose to serve a herbalist the first thing he would demand is sacrifice you come to god it is in the matter of sacrifice that both god and satan agree that it is a law escaping sacrifice using the guise of christianity is a joke let me tell you sincerely and i submit to you there are dimensions you will never step into until you understand the mystery of sacrifice i wish i had time i would have told you my stories don't think people just come out of nowhere that, that is a joke the realm of the spirit is so strict in its operation you cannot bribe your way through mm -mm. ask cain and abel they, you, you you can't manipulate your way through he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake. You know why? Because there is blood dripping upon their altar. When a, a death sentence came by a genuine prophet in chapter 38 of Isaiah to Hezekiah, he said, okay, I respect your ministry. I can't doubt you. You have a credible voice, but leave me and God. He turned his face to the wall. He didn't say, God, add yes. He said, remember. When did you change, oh God? When have you started ignoring sacrifices? Have you forgotten? I tell you the truth there are men who are standing today 
upon the sacrifices of many years they have built it has risen as a memorial in the realm of the spirit yes sir when Cain killed Abel he thought everything was all right the blood of Abel went to the altar in heaven and started crying and God had that voice there are people you cannot touch the blood upon their altar has a potent voice no enchantment and no divination against them can stand hallelujah please rise up on your feet your day of visitation your day of visitation your day of visitation the bible says in hebrews chapter 4 help that lady please he said they heard the word just like we did but it did not profit them not being mixed with faith in fact the bible says it this way there remained a rest there is a sabbath for the people of god he says that if they had received the sabbath he would no longer talk about it that means every year kept proposing a sabbath god was saying you can step into certain levels of rest for someone here maybe you were in this convention last year and god gave you an opportunity but you were not discerning to step into your rest now god has granted another opportunity again maybe a man of god according to god's schedule you were supposed to have contacted an anointing last year and by now your ministry should have scaled heights but you did not discern i pray that like jacob you will not waste this second time jacob wasted it in chapter 28 and chapter 32 he was strong enough to say i'm not leaving you we are going to pray just one minute and then i'm going to respectfully plead with our father to come and stand in his capacity and declare because jubilee you see is a feast that goes with trumpets the assignment of a trumpet is to announce an end of a season and to open another the ram's horn was a mystery shofar even the return of christ will be by the trumpet the blast of the trumpet of an archangel the feast of trumpets is a mystery sorry we may not have the time tonight but let's pray is someone ready to pray prayer point number one say father one more time louder say father in the name of jesus i decree and declare release discernment upon my life open my eyes to discern and maximize seasons go ahead and begin to pray open my eyes someone pray someone pray season the miracle of open eyes the miracle of discernment in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray prayer point number two I like you to pray the grace to take prompt action the Bible says when the Lord came to Abraham in Genesis 22 it says Abraham take down thy son thy only son whom thou lovest and take upon a mountain that I will show you the Bible says Abraham arose early obedience is time dependent you are going to pray for grace to take the necessary actions promptly are we together it takes grace to take action on time say father in the name of jesus i receive empowerment to act in obedience lift your voice and pray the grace for obedience obedience in prayer obedience in fasting obedience in keeping to the terms of scripture the obedience of faith hallelujah 
Hallelujah. He said, now that you know these things, happy are you if you do them. It is not knowing that brings you results. It is the grace to engage the truths that you know. The last prayer point. You are going to pray and say, Father, grant me the grace to make the requisite level of sacrifice in this season that will shift me to step into the blessings of jubilee lift your voice and begin to pray the grace my father the grace the grace, the the grace for sacrifice lord i ask all god for the grace to know what to do to know how to do it to walk in what i do in the name of jesus lord i ask for the grace let the grace be released let the grace be released to make the right sacrifice that will prepare me to my next level for there is a next level i must go to i receive the grace to make the sacrifice that will push me into the next level in the name of jesus hear me for some of you the sacrifice that God is demanding from you right now is extended periods of intense consecration and prayer. For some of you, the sacrifice that God is demanding from you right now is the extended period of word study to camp with Jesus till something falls upon your life. For some of you, the sacrifice God is demanding right now is a prophetic seed from you not something you reach down a pocket and remove as if you are bribing God. Something that there is a difference between Ishmael and Isaac. When you give Isaac, you will know. Listen, listen, listen. I fear God and I love you too much. I will not deceive you. There is a place of commitment, a sacrifice that touches the altar to say, Lord, this is for my children. Ending... I, I wish I had time. I would have shown you a king in the Bible that during a time of war, defeat was imminent already. And he took his son and slew the son, the first son. The Bible says an indignation rose against the people of God before God. Hmm. There are seeds that can change seasons. Believe me. There are some of you, your church is not opening up. Stop roaming around and going on in circles and making all kinds of assumptions. This grace bar, if it is not there, it is not there. It's as simple as that. There are people in business, respectfully speaking, you have tried and tried. Worry is a place, a land of abundance. You can be in a city, yet spiritually the two lift gates have not been opened. Yes, sir. Just because you are in a city does not mean the gates are open. You can be in a city for many years. I come from the north and when you pass many northern states, there is what they call a city gate. It's a prophetic thing even though most of it has a lot of witchcraft connotations. Until you pass that gate, you are not yet in the city. Some of you have been in worry for 10 years, 20 years, but in the realm of the spirit, you are still outside the city. So the blessing and the riches from that city does not come to you. Because the Bible says, as for the earth, out of it comes bread. It says the increase of the, the earth is for all. Where is your portion? Because God is a God of portions. You need to provoke certain seasons. Sacrifice works on the law of death and resurrection. God himself used that. Because except a corn of wheat falls to the ground, it abides alone. For someone God is speaking to you, you need to sit with your wife, sit with your company, and say, what is the jubilee sacrifice that I have to bring before the Lord? If you don't believe it, don't do it. The, I told you, sacrifice is not all about money. Remember what I said? There are many people giving God money and God is saying, it's you I want. Keep your money first. You can bring money and come and drop it. You are just doing politics. God wants your heart first. There is something called an acceptable worship. Your heart and then your giving. But by all means, don't give God your heart alone. That sacrifice, it is true. We are going to pray. I pray over you in the name of Jesus. I stand upon this grace before I request our Father to come 
and make a jubilee prophetic declaration here at this session but i stand under the corporate anointing of every man of god woman of god here represented word of life and all who are connected all who are following by a live broadcast or a rebroadcast in the name of jesus here in this season of jubilee i sound a shofar in the realm of the spirit and i declare let it be a season of exodus from every calamity everything that represents shame reproach delay retrogression ichabod that proverb that has been used over you in the name of jesus christ i declare seasons change seasons change seasons change hallelujah genesis help that woman please genesis chapter 24 or 21 from verse 1 the bible says and god visited sarah as he had said and god did unto sarah as he has spoken god only does what he has said he does not do what you want he does what you want that is consistent with what he has said the assignment of god's power is to look for what god has said the power of god has no ministry until it finds what god has said the anointing is the validator of the speakings of god so if god has not spoken the anointing can be dormant i prophesied as i was commanded he said and there was a sound let me speak over someone whether in your ministry whether in your business this jubilee anointing i declare let it rest on the works of your hands let it rest on your family let it rest on your children in the name of jesus i declare rest round about rest round about rest round about hallelujah i prophesied to Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 to 12 over your life you are blessed in the city you are blessed in the country in the name of jesus christ i prophesy psalm 112 over your life he said blessed is the man that feared the lord that delighted greatly in his commands he said his seed shall be mighty upon earth i prophesy that your seed is mighty he said the generations of the upright shall be blessed may your children and your children's children be blessed he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endureth forever the memorial of your impact will not be eroded in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now please hear me my time is up but I have to do this I'm bound by my covenant of loyalty to the cross to ensure that I make a call even if it is one call my apologies please let me just a minute it is impossible that in a gathering like this there would be not one person who needs to be saved the bible says and the lord added daily not as many as should serve as many as should be saved first hallelujah there are people here who are saying i came for this jubilee conference and while hearing you speak truly if i'm to be honest if i'm to be sincere my ways have not been right with god there are others who are saying i have never truly made this commitment unto jesus i have come to church i come to church i am sincere there are yet others who are saying apostle i remember giving my life to jesus but as it is right now i cannot say i am a child of god the church is not a cinema center the church is not just a place of entertainment believe me when i tell you no matter what we do if we ignore the salvation of the souls of men then it is incomplete i want to make an altar call right now i'm going to count one to five above me uh, below me here and those who are falling online the overflows outside i'm going to count one to five you are saying apostle 
I need Jesus now and there is nothing to be ashamed of. As I count one to five, I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain. And I want you to come and just kneel at the altar or stand there if you can. At the count of five, I will pray. Win that war of destiny right now. And don't wait for anyone to be the first. Don't say I'm waiting to see who comes. It's, this is a personal affair. I begin my counting now. Run to Jesus. One. Okay, those who are in the gallery, there's a request that you just stand right in front of me here so that you are not able to go, you are not uh, creating any disruption. Please come. Those in front, just come right here. I'm going to see you. God bless you. Word of life, is this how you celebrate salvation? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ is formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ is formed in me. I want you to lift your right hand for all of you who are standing. I see you, we see you, and those who are uh, by the altar, please lift your right hand as a sign of surrender to Jesus. And I'm speaking to someone right now who may be following from across the globe, maybe Europe, America. Asia, Africa, some state here in Nigeria, or probably you are listening to a rebroadcast. Here is an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? There is always something, your participatory role that you have to play for eternal life to be yours. Lift your right hand. I want you to say this after me loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, I have heard your word I believe that you love me I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I declare that Jesus is my Savior I declare that Jesus is my Lord and I declare that Jesus is my King from tonight eternal life is in my spirit i declare that i go from glory to glory and from grace to grace i am a child of god amen father thank you for these ones you have brought them by your spirit the bible says as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away these ones have come declaring their faith in jesus and by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. From tonight until forever, you walk in the newness of life. You are saved. You are born again to the glory of God the Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, some cards have been given to you. Congratulations. I want you to follow the directive. Now, all of you, um, please listen, listen very carefully. You will be directed by an official right now. Officials, please, can you wave your hands so that they see you? Okay, I'm told that those upstairs, just move to the back. Someone will be directing you and someone will be there. Please, all of you together, let's celebrate them as they go. And all who are by the altar, just follow the officials and they will direct you in the name of Jesus. I want you to stand I I said I was going to make a request to ask our father to just come in this session I know that he has spoken over you he speaks over you every day but this is a prophetic word of release I know that you have listened to this man for some of you for decades but I want you to listen tonight with your heart open and with a renewed grace to receive I'm ready to receive myself because I know it's a new season. And while he does that, I want to say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to have been a blessing. And it will be for you from glory to glory.
in the name of Jesus. Can we invite our family? Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain